Hello there everybody and today I'm here to talk about X-Men 97 and uh, we're going to be talking about Tolerance is Extinction Part 1 and 2, I can't wait for Part 3, comes out this Wednesday So uh, this episode is we're learning about the origin of Bastion As he is a big threat to the X-Men And we see conflict between Cyclops and Cable eh. As he, they're plotting their next move against him for all the bad things he has done. And Cyclops mainly teams up with Cable and Jean Grey. And they go to his... They find like his childhood home. And that's where they find their his mother. And we learn about his origin. Apparently, he was supposed to go with Charles Xavier. But uh, his mom rejected it once she learned about mutants. And... Uh, it, I think it caused a turn for him once he was mistreated as a child. And now it's led him down to, to a dark path where he views himself as naturally evil. And he has Magneto held hostage. But as this is all going on, we all learn about the human sentinels we all saw last episode. It turns out that Bastion had various civilians be experimented on and turn into the human sentinels and he even wiped their brains not even remembering what happened and basically everyone gets ambushed as a uh, cyclops gene grain cable they're talking to the mother who turns out to be a human sentinel herself and and they're getting attacked by the various human sentinels while wolverine nightcrawler and Beast tried to defend in the X-Mansion, but it does not work out as they're all getting attacked. And Wolverine slices and dices the various people, but it just isn't cutting through since they are able to just regenerate. And we also see, like, Jubilee and Sunspot trying to talk to their parents about, like, their powers. But their ambush, who's revealed to be one of their parents, is revealed to be a human sentinel. And they're attacked, and I think they're even captured by the Sentinels. But as this is all going on, I think Bastion's like a like a maid. Like she ends up freeing Magneto after realizing he feeling bad for him. She frees him, and then he is he literally immediately jumps out of the headquarters. He f literally floats all the way to space. And he is, Magneto does something super badass. He is able to, to literally shut down all electricity in the earth. And it causes a huge earthquake. And that's where we get a bunch of cool cameos. The one I've been wanting since this show started. That being the 90s Spider-Man. I was so happy we saw him. Even though he didn't have any lines, it was still awesome to see it that version of spider-man i wonder if he rescued mj that's what i'm wondering and christopher daniel burns did post that he was he will he liked how everyone was happy that he showed up this has been like spectacular for spider-man we saw spectacular spider-man in spider-verse spider-man unlimited and now 90 spider-man i really do hope we get 98 spider-man we also saw silver samurai which was cool but uh, seeing this was a, like a dream come true. Because that 90s Spider-Man show was easily one of my favorite Spider-Man shows. I honestly would like to make a video about which is my favorite Spider-Man show. Because I really love the Spider-Man cartoons. But anyway, I think this episode ends with Charles Xavier crash landing on a damaged X-Mansion. As Hank McCoy is trying to heal from his wounds. And uh... He, and Wolverine shocked to see the professor return, even though Wolverine's looking very ripped. Charles basically calls to all the X-Men. He says the iconic line, to me, my X-Men. And that's that episode. So the next episode, Tolerance is Extinction Part 2, is where the X-Men have all gathered together to finally take a stand against Magneto and Bastion. After learning of their evil plans. But they're, it's causing a wait between. Because Charles has returned home. And it causes conflict with Cyclops. But things are going somewhat well. When Storm and Ford show up. And, and Hank is like surprised. That the, the Magneto's power. Didn't shut down his leg. And, 
and Jean's hugs Storm, and they say how she got her powers back. But it's all interrupted when Magneto shows up, and he's pissed. He's got his suit back on. He ain't wearing what he wore in the beginning of the show. It, his design looks awesome. And Magneto wants to recruit some of the X-Men. He literally has like a giant meteor or something. But uh, the ones that decide to join him are Rogue and Sunspot. Because Rogue has been so upset at what happened in Genosa. And Sunspot's upset because he felt his parents betrayed him. So they join Magneto. And, and, the, and Storm tries to convince Rogue to stay because they're family. And it makes perfect sense for... For her to say that. And it's surprising. Not really for Rogue. Since I kind of knew she was going to join Magneto. Since they already were forming a relationship. And Sunspot. Yeah I was a bit surprised. But he's, you still feel they're on the good side. They just are having very conflicted views. About this whole thing. The whole conflict between humans and mutants. But uh, the, the X-Men are doing their best. To get ready for what is to come. And we get this funny scene where while they're going to get new costumes so they can go to the place Magneto's at to take him down and stop him from his causing mayhem for all of mankind since he's literally about to destroy the world. They get new costumes and they're looking like they're giant size X-Men when they the X-Men were sort of rebranded and they make fun of the, the X-Men line from t the, the 2000 movie where... Uh, that movie makes fun of how they wear yellow spandex. This time, they make fun of black leather. And Cable's like, you're expecting to wear that? And then Cyclops is like, what were you expecting? Black leather? Like, that was a good line. It's just, like, a, a nice way to kind of playfully rip on the, the, the Fox movies. But uh, anyway, the, the X-Men are at Magneto's Fortress. And they're having a big showdown against all the what's going on. But we see the return of Mr. Sinister, who has come back, and he is somehow behind all of this. And he manages to take control of Cable, and he manages to get into a fight with Jean Grey. And I think Jean is caught into the explosion, but uh, mainly the X-Men are having a showdown with Magneto, and they're doing their best. But Magneto's just growing too powerful and Charles is trying to do his best to be like, Magneto, you need to stop this madness. And Magneto's just like, Charles, I always wanted to say this, but shut up. But uh, as he's about to, to tear things apart, he's almost taken out by Charles when they take his helmet off. But uh, Cyclops tries to stop Charles from like causing Magneto to get a seizure, but... Well, when Magneto's about to crush everything, big surprise from Wolverine, he is able to stab Magneto. Through, and there's a, the blood is actually shown. Yeah, so this show ain't pulling its punches. And Magneto does something crazy. He is able to rip open the, the skeleton, the metal skeleton in Wolverine. And I've won I actually wondered if Wolverine never had a healing factor in the show, but he does. I mean, how else did he live this long? Since he's Wolverine. But uh, I hope Wolverine is not dead. I sure hope he comes back. But uh, X-Men 97 was really good. Each episode is just a banger after banger. And it's, it's it really pays respect to the, the lore. And it's they do some intense stuff. And yeah, it was awesome seeing Spider-Man, of course. But uh, I look forward to the final. I'm going to review it for sure. And the animation still looks spectacular for for usual. We also got, I forgot to mention, we also got a Doctor Doom cameo in Baron Zemo. That was cool as things are going on. But uh, I'm really curious how they're going to do this conclusion. And by the way, unfortunately, they cannot reverse the death of Gambit since Cable tried to do that. But it led down a darker path. But uh, it's very unfortunate. But Gambit made a great sacrifice, even though Rogue is still grieving. But I really look forward to it, all what's going to go down in the Season 1 finale. And I hope what they do for Season 2 is really good, too. So, uh, I'd probably give these episodes like a 9 out of 10 or a 10 out of 10. But, uh, anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and X-Men Unite.